So this is the dollar, and it actually rebounded from a two-week low and then whipsawed a little bit. It's given the trade war, given the Fed path, where do you see dollar going? So the main driver of the dollar recently has actually been risk aversion. So you've seen the dollar as a, a, a barometer of market concerns around these rising uncertainties. I think that partly explains why you, sh you, sh you saw this immediate sort of period of dollar weakness after the election result because we had clarity of re reduction of market concerns. When we look forward, we still think we're in an environment where uncertainty is likely to persist. Right. We believe we're in an environment where the Fed is going to continue to gradually raise interest mm -hmm. rates in contrast to what we're likely to see out of the ECB or the Bank of Japan. Mm -hmm. That suggests some dollar strength in the future, but actually much more modest dollar strength in our view than we've seen this year because we're unlikely to get the significant rate surprises that the market had to adapt to uh, back in 2000, earlier in 2018. But does an, un, that uncertainty you're talking about, Richard, actually lead to a market correction? Well, what we're seeing right now is actually rather than a correction, a significant correction in the market, you're seeing this persistent r uh, widening of risk premium. So, yeah. so valuations are, uh, are becoming more attractive because earnings growth is still holding up, particularly in the US. It's been a, another very strong earnings season mm -hmm. in the US. I think to some extent overlooked by markets because of other events. But the earnings season remains strong. But markets are way down for this uncertainty. So that risk premium rises. And that what we call an uneasy equilibrium between strong growth on one hand, rising uncertainty on the other, could well persist for some time. Um, you, I'm sure, look at uh, some of our market blogs, which is the MLive uh, function that you can you know, find on the Bloomberg terminal. And today we're trying to figure out exactly when the funding squeezes hurts the Fed or impacts the Fed. When do you see it? So our view is the Fed's going to continue to raise interest rates as long as growth remains strong and as long as we don't see any negative impact on the economy coming either from the gradual tightening of financial conditions, and our view is that financial conditions have tightened over, uh, um, uh, over the last few months, but not yet to, to levels at which we are seeing impact in the economy. Uh, or to what extent are we seeing rising trade tensions actually impact growth? So what we're seeing is a heightened anxiety about trade tensions. We can see that in the markets. We can see it in our own geopolitical risk indicators. We can see it to some extent in what companies are saying about 2019. They're nervous about 2019. But what we're not seeing is yet the evidence of that of those trade tensions impacting growth. So in our view, that suggests the Fed you know, is going to raise interest rates again in December. Yep. We're likely to get up to two more interest rate hikes over the next 12 months. But actually beyond there, I think that, that you've got greater uncertainty. And actually when we look at what's priced into the Fed funds rate, actually for the first time in a long time, we'd see actually risks potentially to the downside to some of those expectations. 